I mean, that still blows my mind. The idea of like, I know designing in the browser is like the way we should really be doing things. What may have taken me two or three months to write before using 3.js now may take me like a week or two with A-Frame. Recently, you designed a game in a week based on anxiety. Could you explain mm. a bit, like, what was the process of you iterating or sketching that idea of how, how did you come up with um, that um, process? Okay, so the game um, started out as like a, a week hackathon based around the annual Games Done Quick event. And so the idea was you build a game quickly during the event where people complete games quickly. So I thought I'd give that a go. I had an idea of how I could slot together an engine based out of a few components. Um, the topic itself was basically me being like, what's the most interesting thing that's happened to me recently that I can talk about? And I was just like, okay, well, I've been having anxiety attacks recently. I'll make a game about that. I started looking at Twinery, which is a, a game engine for text-based games. So you click through text, like you read passages, you can expand sections and you read through a story, imagine like a choose your own adventure format. Yeah. Um, it's like the island adventure type games, yeah. And I thought, yeah, that's really cool. It's a nice way to explore the world. But I have a 3D graphics background. I really enjoy doing 3D development. And I am kind of want to give a 3D aspect to this game. So part of the challenge was kind of crowbarring um, 3D graphics into, into a narrative engine that's designed for text-based games. So fortunately, Twinery is all web-based. So I was looking at a few engines, so I was looking at like um, Babylon or 3 and A-Frame. So in the end, I settled on A-Frame because the cool thing about that is that because it's based around HTML, it's very easy for me to, to inject it straight into the engine and into the big HTML file. Uh, so I started looking at hacking around the, um, the Twinery page to shrink the passages down into like a little text box at the bottom and drop the engine behind it. And then I had a thought to myself, like I've got like, I've got a week to make an environment, do animations and interactions. Um, so I used like um, Archaeologic's 3D.io tool to produce some architecture, like an apartment building to explore. I picked that because it's, again, it's another tool that works online, so I don't need to download and install anything because I'm building this whole thing on my Chromebook. And the cool thing about that is that it imports directly into A-Frame. No, so I can build it on the thing and include a line of code in my, in my Twinery game, and boom, I've got my environment, my A-Frame scene. Um, and then I spent a few days hacking in interaction, so you can click on it with a mouse or swipe with your um, thumb on a phone screen. Oh, wow and it works. So yeah, so it pretty much because of the power of A-Frame, which is designed to work on desktop computers and phones, it was responsibly designed pretty much out of the box. But yeah, I ended up writing a Medium post about like all the little hacks I had to do to get stuff integrated. But, but yeah, I got to the point where I had the game, um, like the game itself, like the engine completed, but no narrative and about like two or three hours left. And I was just like, ah, uh, cram in some story, like type <laughs> something up. Um, so it has, it has, you can probably like speed run the game in about 45 seconds. It's not super long. Um, there's about seven passages, but there's some nice Easter eggs and it was just a cool thing to show that, yeah, like given tools that are based in the web, so Glitch for hosting, Twinery for making the game engine, um, Archaeologics 3D.io for making the environment and a frame as the game engine, I could plug all these bits together um, with a bit, little bit of JavaScript to, to grease the wheels a bit. And it worked and it works really very well. And I'm very happy with it. When you're designing the games that you've made, is the, do you think about, like when I'm coming to design stuff, I, pen and paper, mm -hmm. sketch, and I'm, I have to think about the, the, the environment space. I mean, 3D stuff goes way over my head. I just yeah. look at stuff. I, I can only think in 2D. I mean, what is the process that you should go for? Um, is, um, is it that kind of sketchy or is it you're just hacking to see how you can push the technology to do what you no, want to do? No, it's kind of sketchy, um, except instead of sketching pen and paper or using like models or boxes. Um, so because I do most of my 3D development in A-Frame these days, I tend to 
like drop in some basic elements and then I'll open up the A-Frame inspector, which is like the DevTools inspector, except it's built into the A-Frame library. So if you press Control or I, it gives you like a little 3D editor where you can um, add new elements, change components around. So then I'd start moving stuff around, placing it, um, and then I copy and paste the HTML back into um, back into my editor. Or if I'm doing it in Glitch, I might just type in a few lines, refresh it. Eh, it looks not quite like how I want. Do it again. Um, then try it to start my phone or my Gear VR um, and see what it's like. And then just keep like rapid prototyping because I still code like it's like. 2003 and I'll <laughs> like make some changes in a text file and then refresh the browser and see what changed. Um, and it works really well for VR because one line of HTML gives me a sphere with some material and describes it quite nicely. So I can very, very rapidly build up a scene, download some objects from Google Poly um, and just put them in and place them around, tweak some lighting, which would just like to change the lighting is just one line of code. So it's Kind of like sketching. Um, but designing with code or yeah. sketching with code. I mean, I've been like a web developer for since the early days of the web and sketching with HTML is how I've, like if I wanted to demo a website, I would throw some HTML together and I'm doing the exact same process instead of, but instead of getting a web page, I get a 3D environment. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> it really is. Like I've got 12 year olds coding full VR scenes in, in under an hour. Oh, wow. Like it's something, like if you want to get started with VR, but you find JavaScript and WebGL intimidating, but HTML seems friendly and fluffy, A-Frame is a wonderful place to start. For like each microsecond that you're waiting, you are losing a percentage of people away from the site, yeah. which is really nice, but it's, it's a very blunt tool. Right? Um, performance cannot just be applied as this kind of one-size-fits-all to every single solution. 